Hello all, welcome back. This is Foreign Company's uh, second video. If uh, anyone didn't watch the first video, it is available on my channel. Please go and watch that first. Okay. In this video, we are going to discuss about two important things. One is uh, related to prospectus. Another one is related to ideas, Indian depository receipts. First, related to prospectus. So we are going to uh, read these uh, following sections. One is matters to be specified in the prospectus section 387 and then expert consent section 388 and registration of prospectus section 389. These three sections we are going to discuss under prospectus. First, dating of prospectus and particulars to be contained in section this is contained therein section 387. Section 387. And what are the matters that are to be specified in the prospectus? Just like an Indian company, even foreign company can also issue a prospectus and they can also um, offer securities to the Indian public. But they have specified few conditions and few particulars that are mandatory to be, to, be, to be stated in the prospectus. And what are those particulars? No person shall issue, circulate, distribute in India any prospectus offering to subscribe for securities of a company incorporated outside India unless the following conditions are satisfied. What are those conditions? First, the prospectus should be dated and signed. This is a common thing. Any application, any document, anything to be validated, it has to be authenticated and dated also. Right? That is the first condition. Second condition matters that are to be specified in section 26 just like an indian company foreign company also needs to be followed what is this this section 26 section 26 contains lot of compliance requirements which are which are to be followed by the any company going for to offer subscription of uh, securities by issuing a prospectus okay what are those conditions so important things i'm not going to discuss everything specified in section 26 but important things first export consent so one of the important factor is export consent. So we will discuss in detail about this export consent. Who is this expert? Anyone who is having a subject matter expertise and who is having a professional license to deal with it like uh, chartered accountant, cost accountant, company secretary, advocate, engineer, etc. So those people having a having the professional uh, license as well as they have they have that expertise about the market or the particular issue. So they can be called as an expert. They can give a consent to the prospectus to make it trustworthy and make it, make it more valuable to the public. Okay, that is one is expert consent. And second one is related to the, you know, um, before issuing to the public, this every, every prospectus need to be shared with the ROC for the registration. Unless it is getting registered, it cannot be issued to the public. This is one of the conditions specified in section 26. And third one is related to the comply with the conditions. Comply with the relevant regulations like SEBI regulations, company side regulations. They have to give a statement as per section 26 that they have complied with all the regulations as specified in section 26 before it, it is being given to the ROC for the registration. That statement they have to give. These are the main important points specified in section 26. Okay, this is the second point, and the third one in this section, there are few important things like what are the contents that are to be there in the prospectus. There are a lot of particulars that are to be specified in the prospectus, but the, these are the minimum basic requirements which were specified under this particular section. And what are those? First, date and country of incorporation from where this foreign company came to India. What is the date and country of which con country this uh, this particular company was incorporated at first? And then enactment. What is the enactment? For example, in India, it is the Companies Act under which every company will get registered. Similarly, under which enactment that foreign company has, has registered itself in the country of incorporation? That one. And third one, instrument containing that or defining the constitution of the company. That is like just like in India, it is MOA and AOE, Memorandum Articles of Association. Similarly, that company will have some other doc document. The name will be different, but similar kind of a document. That one needs to be there. And then and the last one is address in India where all these uh, instruments was, can be inspected. So before investment, if, uh, if the public wants to inspect the document where it is available, uh, that address they have to give and address of place of businesses in India. What is the principal place of business in India? There are a lot of place of business. What is the principal place of business in India? That address also they need to provide. This is the basic minimum requirements apart from uh, details specified as per the section 26 and other details that was specified in this, you know, under this section. And to remember these four points, I have created a code here that is CA. See, I means a country of incorporation, 
and E means enactment under which the company was registered and C means the instrument defining the constitution of the company constitution of the company that is C and A the address two addresses one is address of the principal place of business in India address where this instrument was available for the inspection so you can remember this quote okay that's all about section 387 okay section 387 now we are going to discuss these uh, two points in detail one is uh, expert consent as well as registration to the ROC in the remaining two sections we will move on to the export consent related things just related to export consent and allotment section 388 who is this expert first as i said earlier any person who is having the subject knowledge as well as the market knowledge can be called as an expert who is having a professional license to act as an expert so for example a chartered accountant company secretary cost accountant advocate or any market expert uh, can be acted as an expert so this expert is a, is a mediator between the company and the investors so he creates the faith in the market faith in the investors to invest in the in that particular foreign company just like an auditor who examines the books of accounts and other records and issues an audit report that creates a trust fa trust factor among the shareholders similarly an expert creates a trust factor among the investors by by providing his consent that that is the important important function of this expert so you know uh, as like he is an important person he is having a criminal liabilities also if he gives a false information if he gives a consent and based on the false information and the liabilities was provided in section 35 of the company said if expert has given a false statements in the prospectus or he has provided his consent based on the false information and so that's the reason why this export export consent is a very important thing is it comes with a liability as well now we will see the provision where prospectus by which securities are issued for subscription contains a statement purporting to be made by an expert no person shall issue such such prospectus if so without this expert consent no company shall issue the prospectus that is the first point expert has not given a written consent for the issue of prospectus if the if the prospectus doesn't contain the uh, expert consent no company shall issue the prospectus to the public that is first thing so imagine a situation for example an expert has provided he provided his consent today he has provided his consent within a week the prospectus is going going to the public for the subscription of the securities so he came to know that today that he has provided provided his consent on some false information and he company has not provided him the uh, true factors and some truth some uh, you know some status of the liabilities or assets of the company and they have uh, falsified the information they have inflated their assets and uh, they inflated the other information and they have not given the full information to the expert to provide his consent in those scenarios expert can withdraw his consent whatever consent that he has provided he can withdraw the consent how he withdraws his consent he can give a public notice first that i have provided the consent to this uh, so and so company now i'm withdrawing the the consent because of this these reasons he can give the public notice and he can inform to the company as well then he can withdraw the consent and then in that case company shall not issue the prospectus to the public that is the point number two here expert has withdrawn the consent before issue of the prospectus that is the second point and the third one third one is that expert is there he has provided a consent and it was it was went very smooth but company has not included this specific statement in the prospectus that expert has given consent and the same was not withdrawn this statement should be there in the prospectus or any memorandum or any an exit to the prospectus anywhere okay this statement should be there. if it is missing then also company should not issue the prospectus that's all about section 388 now we have seen section 387 and 388 387 is what matters that are to be included in the prospectus 388 is what expert consent so we have the matters matters related to matters that are to be included in the prospectus and we have the expert consent as well we have all the information we can go to the public but before going to the public it is important to get it registered with the roc so the company has to take all these papers including the expert consent go to the registrar for the registration once the re registration is over they can go to the public so this is the last step before going to the public so the registration of prospectus and the particulars that are to be included and additional information that are to be included before going to the roc that were provided in, provided in section 318 and as, as registration of prospectus 
Okay, before issuing any prospectus to buy a foreign company to the public for subscription of its securities, company needs to fulfill the below conditions. What are those? Prospectus should be delivered to the registrar for registration. Yes, yes, it has to be. It has to be delivered to the um, registrar. Yes, and prospectus state the face that it was delivered to the registrar because this information should be known to the public that it was it was properly sent to the registrar for registration and the registration was also completed. These two uh, things they have to comply. And along, when when they are sharing this prospectus with the ROC, they have to include this expert consent, whatever consent provided by expert, uh, should be attached to the prospectus. This also should be attached to the prospectus. So we have given all, all information to the registrar. And uh, before giving the registration, because he is ROC, he needs some additional information, additional information related to the company. This is all basic information. He agree with it, but he needs, he can ask some additional information. What are the additional information that he will ask? It was provided in rule 11. Apart from all this information, he will ask few important details, which are, which are, should be asked by the investors, but on behalf of the investors, ROC will ask that information. Okay. So what are those information? Okay, point number one, copy of contract for appointment of MD or manager. If the same is not in writing, then a memorandum containing the particulars thereof needs to be filled. That is the point number one here. Point number one. So why he needs this appointment of MD or manager details? Because uh, he is the driver of the company. Ultimately, he is the decision maker. So it is important to know. Uh, this is market sensitive. If any CEO is stepped down, you might have seen in the stock market that prices will suddenly go down. So he is the driver of the company. So it is important to know about the details. That's the reason why he will ask these details. And, and point number two, copy of material contract. If any entered into business company other than the contracts in the regular course of business. So regular course of business, anyhow the foreign company needs to enter. So that is he is not interested. And other than the regular course of business, where this company is investing, whether that is for the interest in the interest of the share and in the interest interest of the investors, or it is misutilizing the funds. So ROC wants to know about the details. So copy of material contracts is also an important thing to ask. And third is copy of underwriting agreement. If the company entered into any uh, with the underwriter for subscription of the shares, that underwriting agreement also they need to provide. And last is copy of power of attorney if the prospect is signed by the agent of a director. We have seen in section 383, there is an authorized representative concept. If the directors are not staying in India, so there is an authorized representative will be there where notices and all information, he is the uh, official signing authority. If he signed this prospectus, there should be a power of attorney from the director that he is authorized to sign on behalf of the directors. That power of attorney also needs to be attached. And finally, once everything is uh, everything was completed, all the information was provided, all these documents should be authenticated by the chairperson and two other di directors should sign the prospectus. Chairperson and two other directors, either and was there, okay? And other directors should sign the prospectus. This might be an important question for your uh, MCQs. So remember this. Now, now we will move on to the another provision. So before we moving on to this uh, uh, this idea, uh, let's revise this prospectus. Prospectus contains three sections. One is section 387, matters to be included in the prospectus. Section 388, export consent. Section 389, registration of prospectus. Section 387 prospect should be dated and signed and uh, it, it should contain the all the particular which are specified in section 26 and the, remember the code that is ca to there are a few specific things that that has to be included in the prospect that that particulars was given code is that is ca you can remember this code and write an expert consent who is the expert and uh, if he if he wants to withdraw the consent how can he withdraw the consent and what is the statement that is to be included in the prospect that we have all seen and as part of section 38 in registration of prospectus it has to be registered before before going to the public and there are some particulars particulars and additional information as provided in rule 11 the company has to submit those information we have seen this is all about the prospectus of foreign company now we, we are moving on to the idr concept this is the last concept in this foreign company chapter and with this the chapter was over section 390 that is offer of ideas indian depository receipt i hope you already studied this in sfm I, this IDR and global depository receipt, American depository receipts, all were there. So, but I will explain you here again what is this concept of ideas. Ideas is a very interesting concept that we will learn here. Okay. Okay. Let's read this section. No company incorporated or to be incorporated outside India shall make an issue of IDR unless such company complies with complies with what conditions mentioned in Rule 13. So, before going to this provision, let me tell you. 
this uh, raising of this ideas from the indian public is not easy for any foreign company it is very very difficult because there are a lot of uh, compliance requirements were even for an indian company to go to the public there are a lot of uh, disclosure requirements were there from sebi and uh, sebi and other regulatory factors there are other regulatory factors as well for for a foreign company there are much more stringent you know regulations were there to raise uh, funds from india okay what are those first the conditions mentioned in rule 13 in the foreign company rules first from mca from mca said there are some regulations ministry of corporate affairs okay over then sebi said there are some disclosure requirements sebi will also mention some disclosure requirements the foreign company needs to comply and then comply with the directions if any issued by the rbi because there is a foreign exchange money was involved here so rbi regulations they are to they, they need to fulfill so there are three regulatory factors for there they have to fulfill all of these things before going to the public this is the this is the difficulty in raising the funds but still there is an option for the for the foreign company without issuing any prospectus without being listed in the indian stock market they can still raise the funds from the indian public by complying with all these conditions and now concept of idr so first first thing idr is denominated in the indian currency idr denominated in the indian currency reverse to it adr american deposit receipts is denominated in the us dollars okay ids can be purchased by any resident in india who is the resident as defined in fema act 1999 there is an important concept of resident in the fema act you might have studied this that resident definition whoever is the resident as per the fema those all can purchase this uh, you know idrs what is the process of ids we don't complicate this ids concept we will make it very very simple let us see this uh, this uh, with this just a simple arrows we will learn this uh, concept of this uh, uh, this idr first foreign company wants the funds simple foreign company wants the funds but they they don't want to get it listed in their indian stock market and they don't want to issue any prospectus to the public but but still they want the money from india to run the indian business related to that foreign company okay foreign the further reason foreign company will reach to the this uh, depository participant dp means depository participant or we will call it the domestic depository even commercial banks also will like sbi hdfc will also act as a domestic depositor depository participants in india so foreign company will reach to the depository participant for the money so this depository participant will tell to the foreign company okay i will issue the um, some uh, some receipts depository receipts to the indian public against your equity shares the foreign company equity shares i will consolidate your share for example 10 shares i will consolidate i will issue as a as a one receipt to the indian public so indian public will will buy that so indian public will buy the depo this uh, depository receipts depository receipts and whatever money that i will get i will keep my commission as a depository participant i will give the remaining money back to you so in this way foreign company without being listed in india they can raise the funds this is the concept of idr simple concept of idr so this i have given here you know in a diagram you can go through here one important thing is how people will trust this domestic depository so domestic depository may be an agent of foreign company how they how they trust the domestic depository that's the reason why uh, you know sebi has put a condition any any person wants to be act as a domestic depository they have to get it registered with the sebi first to work on behalf of the foreign company they have to register with the sebi first as so as you know sebi will uh, put some restrictions and put some uh, regulations put some qualifications to act as a domestic participant so that that creates a trustworthiness this is the about the domestic domestic depository so let us read this uh, diagram domestic deposit in india will create a depository receipt on behalf of the foreign company against what equity shares of the foreign company equity shares of a foreign company to raise funds in india okay that was raised and then this domestic depository issue depository receipts to indian residents so with this what will happen depository participant he will collect the money depository receipt receives from the public he will issue the depository receipt he collects the money and he will remit the money to the foreign company by holding his commission with that this deposit this uh, depository participant work is over depository participant and uh, doesn't relate anything after this and related to this issue after this his work is over he he took his commission then what about the investors investors has has purchased this depository receipts and foreign company sitting somewhere in another country on how the trust factor will be created for that reason to create the trust factor and to to give a, uh, you know time to time information to the investors there will be a custodian bank 
an overseas bank which is having a place of business in India. For example, Bank of America or Barclays Bank. You might have seen these branches in uh, all, almost all the metro cities. These banks will act as a custodian banks to hold these equity shares of a foreign company. They have their place of business in the country of incorporation of this foreign company as well as the in India, India also. So uh, these banks will act as a you know custodian for the Indian investors. So this is how the process will go on for the ideas. I hope you understand this. You can go through this again. Okay, and then the last point is central government can make sorry. Central government can make any rules relating to offer, disclosure, sale, transfer, transmission of ideas. Yes, central government has all the power to decide to make any rules, to amend any rules, to make any new rules for the ideas related things. And I have given a keywords for revision here. You can go through. And this is all about foreign companies chapter. There are few sections for the 391 and the 393A. There is a new amendment. It is not that important for the examination, but we will go through that. And we will see this question number 14 now in the question bank. Question number 14. This is a direct question. Uh, it is a North Sea Shipping Limited is incorporated in South Korea. It has established an office in Paradeep. Mr. Jonathan is the branch in charge and the compliance officer in India has received a communication from the CEO in South Korea to explore the possibilities of issuing ideas to the extent of uh, 1000 million in financial year 2020-21. He has approached you the financial consensus to for your advice. So, it is it is just asking about the what is the total compliance procedure to raise funds in India using the IDR concept. So you have to write everything whatever is there in section section 390 as an answer to this question. Then you will get a full marks. Okay. I hope you understand this chapter. I will move on to the miscellaneous provisions of this chapter. There are only two sections. Uh, I think three sections were left. You can just read. Don't spend too much time on these chapters. And section 391, 392, and 393A. Section 391, application of uh, sections uh, 34 to 36 in chapter 20. Section 34 to 36 of companies shall be applicable to the foreign company as well as uh, with respect to the issue of prospectus and IDR. So 34 and 36 is related to the prospectus provisions. Those are uh, equally applicable to the foreign company as well. That is point number one. Point number two is related to chapter 20. Chapter 20 related to its uh, Indian business. If they have raised in, uh, raised in funds from public by issuing a prospectus. So these chapters related to the winding up chapter as provided in chapter 20, those are equally applicable to the foreign company as well. Related to its Indian business. If they have not repaid the money to the public. That's all about section 391. Now we'll move on to the 392. Punishment for contravention. So this is the penalty provision. And if the foreign company contravenes any of the provisions of chapter 22 of the company Act, punishment shall be as follows. Um, I don't recommend to read out these penalty provisions. Uh, you know, it is very difficult to remember. I know that uh, the only point that I can tell you here is the amendment is that earlier there is a imprisonment clauses were there here that now onwards there is no jail concept. There is no imprisonment concept here. That is the amendment. That is the last attempt only this amendment came. There is no jail. You remember this much. Uh, if you can able to remember the penalty provisions also, these penalty provisions also, you can go through and you will remember. I am not stopping you. That is all about section 392. Now we will move on to the section 393. This is also a very general provision. So for example, company entered into any contract. But later on, it was it was found out by the ROC that uh, the company has not complied with uh, chapter 22 provisions and uh, some rules. They have not complied with it. Then is the contracts will be invalid? The answer is no. The contract shall not be invalid because the other party has acted in a good faith. Right? Other party can still sue the foreign company. This is the general provision. You will see across all the, you know, all the laws, wherever, you know, LA laws also, most of the parts, you will see this uh, common provision here. That is section 393. Companies failure to comply with provisions of this chapter not to affect the contracts. Simple. And now we'll move on to the last provision. Section 393A. Section 393A is a new provision. New provision doesn't mean that it is a very important provision. There is nothing new in this. So earlier, there used to be a, a central government's role in each and every section. The, for example, foreign company definition, Section 3, 3, 379, application of Act to the uh, application of this Act to the foreign companies, and Section 380, 381. All these places in in it was mentioned like central government has power to amend or make new rules or modify any rules uh, like that. That have they have removed all those provisions from the respective sections and they kept it as a separate provision. That's it. They have introduced a new section. That is section 393A. 
सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट बाई नोटिफिकेशन एक्जाम टेनी फॉरन कंपनी और कंपनी इनकॉपरेट टू बी इनकॉपरेटेड आउटसाइड इंडिया फॉरन फॉरन कंपनी अबाउट टू एस्टाब्लिश for them they can exempt by by notification any of the rules provided in the chapter 22 of the of this act chapter 22 of this act that is that's all about section 393a very recently they have uh, exempted this ifsc centers international financial services centers ifsc means those centers from compliance of section 387 to 392 387 to 392 prospectus and idr prospectus and idea related provisions from these provisions they have exempted this ifsc centers this might be a question for mcqs maybe they may ask so this is all about the foreign company chapter i hope you enjoyed this lecture i hope you understand the concepts please provide a feedback to me in the comment section please share this video please share this knowledge you know uh, your likes and your sharing is the energy to me to make more and more important videos like this i hope you enjoyed this thank you so much This is Viresh you are watching Viru Academy YouTube channel signing off bye